These are two fellows that uh, we've trained over the years, J.C. Clark and Jeffrey Backus. They've really done the work on this to get the evidence together to try to sort out for us uh, what can we do to prevent infections in shoulder arthroplasty. So we've looked at shoulder studies that are some are randomized, some are not, uh, some are level four, level five. We've extrapolated a lot of the information from hip and knee studies and, uh, and from hip and knee practices that you'll be familiar with around the country. So as you know, study, shoulder studies which suggest that uh, we have a high rate of infection. And these infections are uh, common. And P. acnes, as you're well aware, is one that's probably the commonest. And reverse arthroplasty is a bit of a concern to us in terms of having infection in the shoulder joint. And it's very difficult to diagnose. Sometimes we don't even get there. So Propiobacter is of concern, Staph aureus, Staph epidermis, Coriobacteria species. These are all ones that, that are of concern. So if we look at 100 consecutive patients in terms of a skin preparation, and which one should we do to prep the skin as we prepare a pee-up? So we 2% chlorhexidine cloth that some of you are familiar with in the pre-op area to, to wash or soap and water wash. And this, in good studies, is showing that it reduces the colony count for coagulate Nays negative staph, not P. acnes, as you know. And we'll come back to that in a moment as we go through this talk. So PrEP solutions, uh, the significant reduction in staph and, and uh, strep flora uh, are easily done with chlorprep. And that seems to be, in all the literature, perhaps the one that is the best PrEP to use. Now, you're well aware of P. acnes residing in the sebaceous glands. One of the questions is, how deep is that? Is it two millimeters, three millimeters, four millimeters? Because we're gonna go back and talk about the jump start at the end, which is a fascinating new thing Arthrex is doing as to what we're going to do about that. But there are a lot of studies, seven studies in the literature, Cochrane database, about ioband drapes. How many of you use ioband drapes in your total shoulders? As most of us have and most of us do. But if you look at these studies, it's uh, of concern that in fact, they really didn't show a reduction in infection. And this is extrapolated not so much from shoulder, but more from uh, hips and knees and so on, and many still use it there. So if you look at the wide range, uh, maybe they don't reduce infection, and so consequently we've stopped using them. In terms of prophylactic antibiotics, uh, how many of you use ANSEF prophylactically? How many of you use clindamycin? Okay, so we're, we're a little confused as to what we want to use and what we should use, but in looking at the literature by several studies at the bottom there, Probably ANCEF is as good as any prophylactic that we could use. If they're high-risk patients, then maybe Vanco or something like that. And we, we really don't know beyond 24 hours what we should do. And we often wonder about that. We also have the nasal flora to consider. And uh, it, as you know, has a high incidence of uh, uh, MRSA and other organisms there. And there have been lots of ways to deal with this. What we do in our institution now is do an iodine nasal swab in the pre-op area and clean it out. And in, in, on basic science, it dramatically reduces the incidence of uh, infective organisms by 99.5%. So that seems like a reasonable one to do. Um, how many of you use laminar flow in totals? Just with Peter and a couple others. Yeah, so it's interesting. Uh, you know, total need and uh, hip surgeons uh, often use laminar flow. But if you look at this, in fact, there's no protection from infection in generally in all the meta-analysis and studies. And in fact, there may be a slight increase. So we've, st at least I, have stopped using those. Uh, a simple thing that we might consider, if we cut the skin and then we keep cutting down, would we cut through propio, propio factor uh, or acnes, or would we, if we change the knives, lessen that? I don't think we have much data on that, but it's a pretty simple thing to do to incise the skin and then change the knife to doing it deeper. Irrigating fluid, uh, we don't have much evidence that we need antibiotics in the irrigating fluid. In fact, there's a significant reduction in the bacterial load with saline alone. And, and perhaps some of you use an antiseptic lavage at the end of the case, which we've been using for some time. Uh, so we put a pint of uh, iodine, wa dilute betadine rather, and wash it through, and then wash it out. Do any of you use that here? A few, especially Dr. Kissenberg. There are, other, there are other things that we could think about. This is uh, vancomycin powder, and uh, this is uh, actually not so much in our literature, 
but in uh, elbows, post-traumatic stiff elbows, that it dramatically reduces the floor count. So it's a consideration. The other consideration that, that we might consider is injecting gentamicin uh, in, into the joint. And um, we've not done this, and we've not done the uh, powder, but in fact, those are things that we might consider in life. Bone cement, uh, how many of you use antibiotic impregnated bone cement? Most, it looks like, or at least half. So uh, it, it looks like the evidence would suggest it probably is worth using. Uh, the simple thing that we do is we mix a gram of Vico, uh, Vanco in the cement. Uh, some of them come with Topor and Gentamicin embedded in. The difference is rather significant financially. This is an interesting study Levy published, I think Mayo Clinic, on primary arthroplasties and showing an incidence of 50% roughly of P. acnes in the joint at the time of primary arthroplasty. What that means and whether it's true or not, or whether in fact one just dragged this stuff into the joint and then did the culture uh, remains to be seen. But it is of concern, it's a little bit like uh, um, the, uh, in the back when we have the per potential infection with the, like H. pylori for spinal disease. Uh, the gang have talked to me about this, and I went over with a couple of our guys here, including Joe and David, on the jump start. And what's exciting about this, it probably is bacterial bactericidal, particularly due to the electric current with the silver and zinc. And once the current's set up, and if it's bacterial bactericidal, that might be very helpful. The other issue in here, it goes about three millimeters deep. So if we put it on preoperatively, would it go deep enough to kill P. acnes? And if we put it on at the end of the case and it goes down, would that be so? But it is uh, really exciting how this works. And uh, there's an inhibition study, and this is just showing on each side the fact that we, with the electrical field, uh, can help and be more, w better than silver alone. Silver, as you know, uh, lessens infection. I think, Mike, you still use silver on your wounds? Right, but this may be even better. And if you look at the antimicrobial part of it here, P. acnes is one that could be affected by this, and that's why we're sort of interested in this. And this is just, you know, about biofilm, which is bad stuff that collects on surfaces and mostly bacterial. This is just showing that uh, by using this postoperatively on a wound, it pretty much eliminates that. So that's sort of a uh, consideration as we move forward, and we're going to sort of do some research on that. So in summary, 2% chlorhexidine cloth pre-op, chloroprep for a prep, Ioban we do in the axilla only, Prophylactically, we use ANSEF for the routine one. Nasal floor, we uh, uh, swab with iodine. We don't use space suits. We change the knife after a skin incision. Irrigate with normal saline. Use antibiotic cement and a betadine wash before closure. We're considering intra-articular uh, injection of Gento and considering vancomycin, but have not used those as yet. And I think considering all those things, and you've got your routines that you use, but hopefully this has given you a little bit uh, to think about in life.